After a rough first day starting off his road to Radiant 2 and 6 on March 31st, Wuhujin is back today, April 1st, playing again, currently at a 4 and 3. Today we're going to be looking at Wuhujin on Ascent. Now this FOD is interesting because we throw in a lot of operator gameplay. And I think there's a lot of good protocols here that can help you, and I do believe that opping is one of the best tools you can get and work with to be able to rank you up fast. Let's take a look. We're going into this game and the first thing I want to look at as the comps as we've seen before the comps play a big role and big factor in the success or failure of playing raids. The big factor that we had to look here is Cypher. This is a an agent kit that can easily be countered by so with shock darts omen tps and jet updrafts so this is going to be a big key flank might be a big problem here phoenix is the primary flash agent so again as we talked about in the previous vod review having no flash agent can be a really really difficult task for a raise to be able to scale into sight however the sova will be able to help quite significantly with the darts okay, and the drones let's yeah, see how this goes oh you're doing the molly flash thing yeah so again, starting out strong, calling out what they're going to be doing as a team, both Phoenix and Wuhujin here, how are they going to deal with the A main entrance? Oh, starting off your pre-round, super strong. Molly Flash, mid. combo does not end up working out. They're now working a prediction towards mid and B split at this mid. point, with the smoke yeah, being on cat. They're not coming up cat. Oh. There's a call out from Wuhujin. I'll sight, I'll on sight. And now we're fighting for section two. So we've talked about this before several times, even on our last VOD with Sunset. There's sections to every bomb site, as we're seeing right here. They're fighting for section two. It looks like they're not going to be fighting for section three unless the cipher falls back right here. There are trips and a whole bunch of setups going on right now. So the funneling into this area looks like it's going to be a good strong defense. Switch is still an open area. We could have naded switch here. I think he was still in switch here. The and the push through oh my goodness this is this is one of those ones that's hard to predict but again if you're in this situation and you see your teammate dying on site this is all open this is always a possibility being that's a 4v4 you would it would be hard pressed to see you expecting this so this reina was definitely playing a little bit of ranked on us so hard to predict we can't really blame Wuhujin on that one you know where's a here i don't mind this play because he thinks that there's someone caught Okay, so this is okay. When you're playing on eco, going for an aggressive play like this, he thought there was someone in the right corner and trying to isolate one on there. It does end up giving you that one for one trade, but at the end of the day, it's an eco round. You want to do as much damage as you can to the opposing team's economy. Going for the outlaw here. I didn't get to see how many people. Mm, I don't know if I like the outlaw buy here. This is always questionable. Whenever I see him buying this, it's like, what is the reason behind this? Being that there's two people alive left, it's likely with the money that they have Lightning. right here that they're going to probably buy a ton. There will be three people who likely won't be able to full buy. So maybe that's where he's gambling a little bit. But the same token, you know, what's stopping this person from dropping someone? I know that we had two people who lived as well. So I think we have armor and armor in this case. And over here, we definitely have a buy that can go for this. So I, I don't think this is the best time to do this outlaw, but let's see. I could be wrong. I feel like outlaw and raise is actually the fucking schmoove, chat, because uh, you're nade. Famous lost words. Let's see what happens. Right. <laughs> right. Smoke me off, cat. Unless I smoke you off. So we've seen this several times now on pistol round, obviously. And I believe on the first round, they've smoked them off. So this is a play where they're probably going to end up breaking trip here. And splitting towards B at this point. Yeah. We have mid control, firm mid control, breaking the camera. I would assume that a shock dart would come in here as well, but we are playing ranked. Oh, now it looks like a split. This should have been called earlier. Well, Hoogen's in a bad spot right now. This is a split for Cat. Amen. Especially with the drone. There should be someone creeped up on his right. There could be someone on his right here. Okay, they're playing back again. I'm so confused. The trip, the trip. Ranked. Ranked. Who needs to hold my mark? That was a TP past the trip, as he just called right there. So this is, again, as we are saying before, the big factor here is the Cypher Sentinel <laughs> and how there's so many counters on this map, including the comp that they have to play against us. This is not looking good. Going a. I think they've switched trip back. And so where you kind of hope you had a Vandal, because you might be able to clutch this round, and yeah. This was what I was expecting this entire time. I'm surprised someone wasn't in this corner earlier on, especially with the drone and just the ease of access there. So not ready for this fight and also not having the best weapon for the job. My recommendation is keep the game simple. 
Bahujin's reason for buying this uh, for buying this outlaw is to combine the raisinade with the outlaw itself. That's what he called for, but we didn't even see him throw it really. And there was just a smoke off situation on catwalk. So changing up the positioning as soon as you get a shot off there might have been a factor. But ultimately, I'm not really a fan of the outlaw buy. Then you just keep the game as simple as possible here and buy a vandal. I would say nine times out of ten, you should buy a vandal in your third round after you've lost the first two. With all the space taken on B here, there's a chance that they're going to split cat here, but there's probably most of the front brunt of the forces are over on A I'm in their spawn. main here. Stall A, stall A. I'm in their spawn. Yeah, they're taking the orb right now. Chamber took. His teammate's going to die pretty soon here. Jet's A main. He certainly gets split here. Jet's I'm not going to push. I'm going to die if I do. I think nice so shot. He's got five health. 124 or so, or Jet. Good. We might need a boom bot here. If I throw the end over one HP, throw the gun. Boom bot, boom bot. Okay. So whenever you see, whenever you see an it's omen blind coming in on B site, A site, anything like that, that's usually the initiation. At high level, you look at that omen blind as being like they're going here. It's a big, big telegraph move. So whenever you have a situation where utility is thrown at you, especially something like this, where it's a big omen blind, where you know that this is probably going to be the initiation, now that you know that, you need to respond utility for utility in kind. All these fights here are going to be medium long range and not generally the best weapons or gunfights for your sheriff. I would say get that there's a smoke here and that you want to fight off of it, but I'd rather he let in with a alarm bot first because that could draw across our placement it could also stall for time for everyone to get into position look at our cypher trying to flank right here so respond utility for utility and kind first before you take a dry fight Those like this one three. another small thing when you're crosshair placing onto a smoke always think about we want to be on the left hand side or the right hand side how often do you see someone coming through the middle it's usually only going to happen when you have a jet dash or another omen smoke here and a tp but it's never really going to be anything where they're going to be running straight through at that being said if you're looking at gold and below sometimes you'll see that stuff but i would still say generally speaking you want to be aiming for the left or the right hand side of the smoke and that's where they're going to be pathing out of throw the gun down to the right. just like you see with the sova pulling out the operator I can't see your cat. There's one aim aim. My boom saw them. Here's the thing. I love the op on B main, A main, any kind of aggression. There's a lot of opportunity for this. The one thing I would have to ask is, how are you going to get Sova involved here? We obviously don't have the best agent for util, but we could ask for a one way at some point as well. Regardless, we need to get Sova's dart or drone being able to enable him into a more deeper position so we have more info as to where they're going to end up. On this round, it's totally fine considering there's a chance for an operator, so I'm glad he didn't do it, but I do want to see him taking the initiative going forward to get that Sova on the same page as him. Right now, it's looking like an A split. We have some cat. I've got a line with op man. Don't smoke, please. Whenever you're holding a line that's close that there's going to be swung on you want to be looking here you want to and <laughs> i know this sounds troll but you want to be looking here and what you're looking for is a change in the color of the wall that's how you can react the fastest so you're actually staring your eyes right there but you're holding your crosshair a little bit wider like he's doing right here this will allow you to get the instantaneous reaction kind of like how you're doing a reaction time test online get out of great here. shot one minute I love what he does here. This is actually really good op instincts. So the first fight, obviously get the kill. Then he tosses utility, which forces out anyone who might be behind. So watch, drops a nade, drops a nade, toss it right out, pulls his op out and aims for the off angle. Because if they're going to be running in to try to trade him, they'll have to dodge the nade, which is a chance they'll fall into this particular position right here. Really good op mechanics here from Wahujin. One minute. The reason why he zooms out, there's a little hole here, but the reason why he zooms out is because there's a chance of the cross. As we know, he took a chance to fall back behind the box after the first kill, so now the Reyna clearly could clear on the other side. So instead of going double zoom on the second one, he goes on a single zoom. Now, unfortunately, 
The one hole that he has is that he decides to hold the angle from the exact same position. Instead of holding this angle, I'd recommend that he fall back into heaven here and work to play a retake. We have a perfect situation with Sova's drone and a whole bunch of other util to be able to retake the space and having a 5v4 right now is perfect. Changing up his position, playing a more passive position on B. The only issue I don't like when it comes to opping is super passive opping at the beginning of the round. The reason being is that yes, it sets a trap for sure, but the problem is, is that we're not giving them information that we're playing from here. So what could happen is an easy explode. If you miss here, then you're dead for sure. And the other piece is that you can't be actively moving around the map. As an operator, you want to be moving actively between different positions and keeping the opponent guessing. Here keeps you holed up and locked into one position altogether. I'd rather see the Sova drone up. I guess he's AFK at this point, unfortunately. I'd rather see the Sova drone up Wuhujin up to this position so that he can take a deep angle onto B and confirm that space is clear. Oh, just nearly gets by. Now, a lot of people might be wondering why raise for the operator? The operator with raise has a very, very powerful aspect, which is elevations. Obviously with a satcheling, you can change elevations being really weird off angles. So whenever you're looking at choosing an agent to operate on, think about, can they change elevations, first of all, or do they have a get out of jail free card? So for example, Jet is a fantastic opera. She has the get out of jail free card as well as elevation with the updraw. Any agent can opt, but you want to be thinking about those two elements to find the best possible agent to be able to work with an operator. Alright, I'm not a fan of op versus op duels. My theory is, and I've been doing this now for 20 years, opting on multiple teams, you want to be opping the pawns of the team. You don't want to go queen for queen. What that means is don't challenge the operator, instead challenge the rifles. Because now you're going for a 50-50 fight. And sure, it'd be great to take that person out, but it would be also more beneficial to take out two or three with the rifle before challenging any kind of operator altogether. And now it's just over. <laughs> wow. Just think of it like this. A queen can on chessboard can easily take out pretty much every other piece. Why not take out the resources around that operator and then deal with the operator later? Try not to challenge them directly on if you don't have to. Oh, love this. Actually, really, really good. So identifying that his cat player is in a little bit of trouble here, Wuhujin tosses out the nade to be able to isolate and deter anyone from peeking A main and allowing him to support now into catwalk. So watch this again. He's asking himself how wide should he hold right now? I would say change it up just a little bit because this is a common spot that you've played a little bit. Maybe you go up to up top and you can satchel away from that position if things go wrong or you miss a shot. But watch this. So now getting pressured on catwalk, he sees this on the minimap, nades and forward, and then peeks out right here. Awesome work. Holy fuck, I just did a thing. You did do a thing. Way to go. That's some radiant shit right there. <laughs> Just change your position at this point. There's no sense in you being here. Be up in heaven. Be up in heaven, hold an off angle either on this line right here, or you can go a deeper line right here. What's the likelihood they're going to walk over here? They're going to be running. So at 38 seconds, if they're hitting your site, you're just isolating yourself for a 1v1 that you don't need to take right now. We have seen the chamber op before as well. All right, as we talked about before, every sight hit is initiated by the open blind. <laughs> you can start faking this. You can condition your team uh, that you're playing against by doing this and get rotations early. So this is one of those things that you could condition right away, but typically in ranked, you're gonna see this is gonna be an execution right away. So we know this is going to be a big hit. We need to see Wuhujin space himself, probably go up into heaven and start playing for retake here. We have Phoenix alt. We have a whole bunch of alts that we can work with. Fighting forward might be a dangerous spot. We have the shorty and we're revealed right now. So we're in big doo-doo. <laughs> live, live, live. No, Hujin, what are you doing? Live. He had to leave much sooner, but he had to commit to that. So he committed to playing forward when he really should have just committed to playing back in that situation. Whenever you have the operator, you got to think about the value of holding the op and how much it can damage the economy as well. Had he had a rifle, I would have been more okay with this, this play, but this op loss can be detrimental for the team if we lose this round. You want to play? Let's play. Operator's available again. Hey, man, again. Okay. 
that too. And now he's decided to commit to leaving here, which is good to see. Don't resmoke, please. I'm holding one. He has to be single zoom in this angle. This is the angle I was suggesting before, like switching it up a little bit. He has to be single zoom here because the possibility of them getting to wine is there as well. So he needs to be able to be open to flick and to avoid and leave the fight altogether if it doesn't go well. Right this is scary too though, considering that, yeah. Ooh, considering that the chamber has an op here too. Now, this is a really good point to think about. Whenever you're opping, you gotta consider your counters. The biggest counter in the game is the Reina Leer. Because if you opt that Reina Leer, you give up your position already. And the Leer itself pretty much can't be handled by an operator alone. So being isolated like this is actually really good for the enemy team to be able to work this operator off of Uhujin. So now it's dangerous. And he has to almost leave. Okay, good. Nobody pushed in the site, but that could have been a perfect opportunity had they read that he was on that site alone. Doesn't need to peek any wider than this. You should just hold this one angle. Just play deep and hold this one angle here. There's no sense to be peeking both of them. What if this rain is over here again? You're exposing the two angles for no reason. 52 seconds left. Yeah, this is the spot we need to be holding right here. That's it. He's doing this for info, but again, you know, how often are you going to be seeing them just walk right through here? They're going to be running in, you'll hear them, and you can just react on anyone trying to move in from this direction. And that's enough. Get one pick, fall off. Durka's really good at this, if you ever watch his VODs. One main. 36 seconds, they have to explode somewhere, we might want to throw a nade. Okay, never mind, they're going towards B, perfect. Chamber, Reyna, both outlawed. 30 seconds left. Spike down, B. We nade here, into this area. Lane, Into lane. lane. lane Ooh, dead. nice. Great up shot. I'm down to mid if running. I'm holding. Last He's stuck. player standing. No time. There. See ya. Ten seconds left. Six seconds. I don't think they have time for bomb. They had to push him. Oh no. I don't think they had time. Lane, 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 Bomb's right lane, here. Lane. Does he? Is he aware? Did he miss it? I'm down to mid ground. Turning. I'm holding. Last he's stuck. player standing. No time. There. I don't think he's aware that the bomb was there. I think he thinks the bomb was on lane and that someone else was in lane and on site. There. Ten seconds left. Small mistake. It happens, but we hear two people coming from market right now. Seven seconds. There's no chance. He could just satchel away and just live. I'm sure if he looks at this back, he'll probably be like, "Ah, oh, what was I doing?" Yeah, they didn't have time. They did not have time. No way. This is actually on the whole team. It's not just Wuhujin himself. If you're ever in a situation where you see a teammate really, really close to the time being pretty much run out, just remind them, time, we went on time, fall back, live. Anything along those lines, just live, 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 can be a great call out just to remind your teammate. Don't be forceful with the call out, but just be reminding and try to be helpful as much as you possibly can in a nice upward high lighted tone okay. i hear one aim in could be leaving bike down a his clove is alive now here's the thing when you're in a one and done position like this you should be asking or prepping your clove slash controller to set up a smoke to get them out of there Okay, any smoke on mid site, for example, could be satcheled into or just a smoke this place right in front so that he's got multiple ways to really escape from his position and live, especially now that it's 4v2. He has a second right now to ping the floor and say, can you smoke your clove quick? Three, two, one, smoke. One enemy remaining. Luckily, his clove's already smoked off a main, but it's something that you should be setting up with your controller agent if you're playing duelist to get you out of positions that could be a bit hairy if you end up running into them. Now these comms to your controller can be said pre-round. Something that you can do to set up if you're, say for example, playing aggressive on a main, you could op an angle and say, can you smoke on my contact as soon as I shoot? Sometimes you might have a flash agent or initiator flash on my contact after I shoot so that I can peek out again. Not a whole lot of information here. This is where you would like to ask for a dart towards a main. If at all possible, toss one from there. 
Three mid. Going kit. The right click here to stall out. But he should be calling that there's presence over here on cat. Satchel out. It's just the Reyna though, so this could be a lurk. Okay, so with A main control right now, and this much presence towards B in middle, I would say that it's probably going to end up being B with the Sova being over here. One market. Here's a big problem that I see. With market under control, this area here is a threat. So now Wuhujin has to worry about his timings because we've taken A main. So his priority really should be back here right now. If they end up taking A, we have a perfect staging ground of CT and A main to be able to retake. So this shouldn't be priority right now. His priority should be middle. I'm really worried for his health right now. Hopefully they're going to be. They could be right here on middle. Yes! <laughs> Holy crap! I don't think he was ready for this. <laughs> I don't think he was ready for this. I think he got really lucky here. I think he pooped a little. Uh, if I was him, I think he pooped a little. Chill, don't give a 1v1 here. Club needs to get in position. Oh no. Oh no. That's another 1v1 forced. Alright, so we snatched victory from the jaws of defeat here, but that was really close. 6-6 six, six, half? Things are looking good. Oh great. So, fun little fact for you, whenever you're dealing with hell, it can be a pain in the ass. First of all, I call this area sloth, and I call this area a closet. For sloth, this weapon here, I don't believe can spam through, I haven't tested it, but this is the area right here that you want to spam on for a person who is right against the wall. Either you have the crouch spot right here or the headshot spot from standing up. So this is where you want to be spamming along this line right here to be able to get something. I don't believe this weapon can do it, I can't remember, but just for your own reference. Because this fight here can be really awkward. Luckily we have a good right click here, so it ends up working out. There might be one closet. Did we not see Sofa here? Nice shot. Beautiful. Right click. Nade, love that. Generator control. Okay, 2v1 situation. Oh my goodness, we almost had a chance there. Had he hit that shot, there was a chance, but not a bad entry. Not a bad entry. There's a little bit of holes here and there, but I love what I saw. Mid, we have numbers. I hear one market, one lane. There's only one A. Lovely calm right here. Now, what we should be doing, and I believe he's going to do it, He's going to display lurking, but there's two types of lurking, and one that's most commonly known is a timing lurk, which he could totally do right now if he wanted to, and listen for the rotations and then go for it. But I believe what he's going to do is he's going to be the antagonist. Now the antagonist is the one that tries to keep pulling the attention towards B main while their team scales into A. This makes their A site a much more weaker and much more easier for our team to hit together and fo focuses the attention towards him, which is the raise, typically the entry in this comp, um, to look towards B main and keep them here a little bit longer. So maximum there should be really only one on A if he does this properly. I'm gonna make noise B right now for you. There it is. He's just throwing everything into there to make it seem like there's gonna be a lot going on. Satchel to make it seem like you're gonna be going into the site. Another bomb goes down. Now we can catch the timing lurk towards middle. So we're gonna to try to control catwalk here through the mid uh, entrance going to come on tiles. There it is. Beautiful. Love it. Could be another one on middle here. He clears it, love that. Now this that means that there's probably one garden if there's not someone really, really late here. Okay, so he's Garden, probably uh, probably CT Heaven. heaven. Dude, both heaven. Chance heaven. of a kill here, both Heaven, there we go. One enemy remaining. And this should be an easy cleanup at this point. So a great example of how you want to lurk and how you want to be an antagonist to slow down rotations. I'm not sure if it actually ended up working. It might have. But I believe they were already committing to rotating much sooner. Ooh. I think you just got a haircut there. The top of his banana peel just got knocked right off. <laughs> I didn't see one. Here's the thing. We should be going towards A now. And here's why. When you go towards mid in a 5v4, you're giving them exactly what they want right now, which is ugly fights. 
We don't need any more ugly fights right now. We should really just be backing off, going towards A main, using our numbers, using our attrition, using our Clo Vault right now to guarantee a round win. Going towards middle just opens up the opportunity now to make it 4v4. What does middle get us really? Middle doesn't get us a whole lot once we've contested for it for the beginning because now we force them back over here. So unless they decide to uh, recontest this space, you cut off rotations and made all rotations longer, which is perfect for us to be able to back off and hit towards A site. It's 120 Sova. Dude, these guys never run out of ammo. Spike carry is down. Don't be man. Spike down B. And now it's a 3v4. And I attribute this to just attacking the wrong areas. Over my face. 2v3 situation, 1v3 situation, 1v2, 2v2. So now it's 50 50. If you push CT, you might get it. You can throw Phoenix the bomb. Phoenix the bomb's down for you. Last player standing. Unfortunate. Like, I get that they have to fight because they're. 30 seconds ult, left. But the speed at which they rushed that fight was criminal. Yeah. Basically, not planning and not taking your time on the fight. I know that there's a bar there, but at that point, Clove had like at least a quarter of a bar still left. So there's a lot of time still being able to be able to use to take your time and really peak that with some sort of gusto. It's two cat. It's two cat, one mid. One beam. <sighs> okay. Why he did it? Because there's not many people left in the round. And he needs to make something happen. And he's probably hoping that he'll catch a timing. But this whole round just seems like we're just tossing all together. Bomb is off into spawn, first of all. Immediately, this is something that I talk about to every level. If you see this happening, the bomb does not have cooties, okay? The bomb does not have cooties. Bring the bomb, regardless of who you are, what role you are, and drop it near the barriers. That way you can at least work with it. That's the first thing. Now, when things are going wrong, absolutely try to make a play, but give yourself a goddamn chance. The thing is, is that we just sat there complaining about our clove rushing a fight. And now we go back and now we just watch him full send through a drop into uncontrolled territory, no utility, no satchel, nothing. Not even a boom bot to try to clear it. There's still a chance, even if you're in a 2v5, there's still a chance you could win and you have a minute and 13. Just take your time, bro. It's okay. I think we're tilting a little bit in the brain there. Relax, it's gonna be okay. I'm here for you. You're genuinely dumb, Clove. Oh, starting to get tilted. With, uh, Team's trying to get tilted. You want to play? Let's yeah, play. Yeah, we push the one round and it does not work. We get killed so by a chamber who's holding an angle. Oh boy. The tilt is no good. Okay. So, we've noticed this once the tilt starts setting in. On previous VODs. Again, something that, you know, his entries are fantastic. I don't mind them. Like, they're going in, they're taking space, but listen to the action comms again. It just takes two seconds to say, I'm going in, right? So that your team can at least, like, they're acting off him, which is great, but a lot of the times when this happens, I've noticed his teams don't act. They just sit back behind the smoke. So this needs to be done. This needs to be called out. It's not something you can't just laze through. And he knows this too. Really? <laughs> really? That's unfortunate. Ugh. Last player stand. Wow. This round just did not go well. <laughs> now we just gotta try to make anything happen. So let's see how he peeks us. Because I think this is an op, isn't it? Death's grounded. These rounds are never over because people, for some reason, no matter what the rank, like, you know, we're talking about Ascendant, we're talking about relatively higher rank, but I always call it low rank, 
People just keep full sending for some reason. Why are we doing that? Why do you play like this? Like you're just giving Wahujin a chance to rank up here. You're just giving it for free. You're giving him for free. Why, why, why do you keep peeking? Now it's a 1v2 situation. He has a chance to win this. This is insane. If he wins this, I'm gonna lose my shit. Hopefully he remembers the reload. There we go. They could go through mid right now because you know, W key, that's what we do in ranked. Oh, this is unbelievable. 48 seconds left on the clock, too. There's lots of time here for him to be able to win this round. And they push through mid. Of course they push through mid because W key, chat. W key. That's how we play ranked. Can you imagine if we just stayed right back here and how he would have zero chance to be able to win this because no one would give him a pick? It would just be over, right? And we're already moving on. But we have to give him... We have to tempt fate in Valorant. We have to tempt fate. Why? Woo! That's what we're talking about. Nice. Could be worse. Defenders win. Unfortunately, I another loss. But I'm starting to see a little bit more improvement. Still a couple holes in the gameplay, but exciting to see how Probably he's working with all of this problem, working with the sure. adversity, and hopefully starts getting it together soon. Thanks for watching again.